Oh, hey, how's it going? I'm Ruffle Bricks, and welcome to the third part of my Manic Miner speedrunning tutorial. In this instalment, we'll be covering caverns 8, 9, and 10. This part of the game features more narrowly copyright dodging monsters, including the gun flexing Kong Beast and his selection of smelly barrels. We'll also make a trip to Endor, where we learn that Ewoks are basically just Minor Willy with his helmet on back to front. And we'll cover one of the toughest speedrun strats yet, as we run the gauntlet of throbbing amoebatrons and rolling bookends. I have other names for these suggestive looking beings, but I want to keep this video fairly PG. And finally, I'll be giving a quick explanation of the Kong Beast Percent speedrun category. For those who'd like to do a Manic Miner speedrun, but feel that 20 caverns is a bit too hefty. All right, people, let's get rolling. Here we are, Miner Willy meets the Kong Beast. You'll notice we've got two switches in the room. This switch here opens a door in this wall, which means that we can get to the right hand side of the level and grab this final remaining banana. But this switch here, what this does is this removes this platform from beneath the Kong Beast, causing him to plummet to his doom. Now, for the purposes of this speed run, we are gonna need to hit this switch, but we are not gonna hit this switch. So you do actually get points as a result of the Kong Beast falling to his death and that can ensure that you get extra lives quicker, should you need them. The downside of that strat is it takes about an additional 15 second detour in order to hit it, and it's not crucial to actually completing the level. All you need to do to complete the level is just grab all the bananas, so there's no real need for you to do that. So in this speed run route, we are gonna skip the second switch. Here, you wanna get a bunch of jumps fairly precise within a short space of time. So let's talk about the first jump. Now we're gonna do another trick with the conveyor belts in this uh, game. We want to get up to this platform here. To do that, we need to jump onto this conveyor belt here. The problem is this conveyor belt pushes you to the right. So if we were to do what we would normally do, which is two vertical jumps in a kind of middle position here where we've got pixels on either side, this is what would happen. As you see, the conveyor belt would actually push me right, meaning that I would end up jumping down into the exit, which isn't lit up yet. So it's just focusing as a nice little safety bunker there. Now, that's fine, and we will be using that safety bunker later, but it's not optimum for what we want to do here. So instead, what we're going to do is we're going to do a, a position hold on the conveyor belt again, kind of like the one that we did in Eugene's Lair. But this is different because we're going to jump twice using the vertical jump button. But once you've started your first vertical jump, start holding the left button whilst you're on midair. And that will actually keep you stationary on your second jump meaning that you will land on the platform above. So like this. And there you go. See, we've managed to get up straight onto that platform without having to have any additional worry of dodging the pink barrel there. So the next thing to do is we're gonna grab this banana over here, the one on the left. This jump back to the platform here, you have two pixels at most that you can get the jump from. If you're on this pixel, you'll be fine. If you're on this pixel, you'll be fine. If you are here, you will fall to your death. So you wanna do a jump from there and jump back up here. Now, with this next jump, you want this, this jump here so that you actually grab the banana whilst you are on midair. Because that is crucial to the timing of this. You can jump too far back and that will not happen. So instead, you want to be around about the mid-stride position here, or further to the right. As long as you're there, then you will grab the banana in one jump. Next thing, once again, we're starting from a uh, mid-stride position here. And this is again a two pixel range you've got, because we're gonna do a turning triple jump here. This turning triple jump is gonna get us firstly onto this platform here. Then the turn is gonna get us up to this platform and then the third jump will 
get us over to here, hitting that switch in the first place. So here we go. Two, three, like that. And there you hit the switch. You can overshoot this position by one. So if you do it from here, one, two, three, you will still land fine on that platform. But if you are this far along, then you are going to miss the jump when you get to this platform here. And then for this last banana, this is as far to the right as you need to be for this jump to work to grab that banana. But actually, you've got quite a lot of pixels grace to get that jump without hitting the Kong beast or falling into the gap. I believe it's about a five pixel range for that jump. So you don't need to worry about that as much as some of the other jumps in the level. The reason you want to get all those jumps as I've, I've mentioned them is because the pink barrel is going to be in an optimum position if you do that for you to jump straight over them when you get down to this conveyor belt again. So let's put it all together and see how that works. So here we go. Jump over the thing. Double jump, holding position on a second. Jump across here. Two pixel range for that jump. Mid stride or more for that one. Mid stride here, turning triple jump up here to hit the switch. Jump across to grab the banana, last banana here. Now, drop quick as you can down these platforms and that puts you in the perfect position to just jump straight over the pink barrel like that. And that means you can then just run straight to this banana over here, the last one, jump back, jump up, and then fall into the exit like that. That time is about 43 seconds in total. Let's say you make a mistake on that. So up we go, jump up like this, boom, 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 comes across, jump here, grab like that. Oh, nice, 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 and oh, damn, I missed the banana. Okay, let's go across and oh, no, I was too early on my triple jump. Okay, jump up, hit the switch, grab the last banana. And now what this means is, as you can see, now the pink barrel is no longer in as good a position for us. to. So we actually have to wait there in the bunker to get beyond it. And that actually cost you... A little bit of time and also then as you can see the pink barrel is not in as good a position for us to get back in as it was before so for those of you who aren't necessarily interested in doing a full speed run of manic minor and you'd like to perhaps do a part run of it then you also have the kong beast percentage speedrun category which basically just involves dunking the first Kong Beast, and that's all you need to do. So because of that, the route through this level is slightly different because you no longer need to get all of the bananas in it. Jump once, jump twice, jump three times to get onto the platform, jump up here, triple jump to get the switch, fall down, fall down, fall down, go into the bunker until the pink barrel comes back, jump up, jump across to here, jump across, then very quickly jump back onto this platform here, jump up, hit the thing and hit the switch and time. That is where you would cap your speed run if you were doing the Kong Beast category. And this is probably one of my least favourite levels in the game because there is a lot of waiting involved in this room. And to try and get rid of that waiting is pretty darn taxing. First off, I'm going to um, give you a sort of safe strat, or mostly safe strat, with a little bit of a, a, a danger strat towards the end. Starting from the beginning, just hold right and hold right immediately as you start, because that will get you beneath the green and the blue amoebatrons. As you notice, there was a lot of colour clash on Willy's face as he passed under those. And literally, if you are one pixel behind running from the starting position, you will get killed by them. You need to go straight out of the gates with holding the right button. Now we jump up here, turning double jump, and then jump over the red amoebatron like that. 
Now we need to wait for this blue rolling bookend here to start coming back towards the right like that, as so. And jump over these. As you can see, we're having to wait quite a bit for each of these to get past them. Jump twice to the left there and then twice to the right here. Next thing we're going to do is wait for the green bookend to hit the left hand side of its cycle and start going right. When we do that, we're going to jump onto the conveyor belt. Watch. And then jump about here and that will get you across and you won't hit the blue amoebatron as a result. But you kind of need to do that fairly early in the conveyor belt, not at the edge, because otherwise the blue amoebatron might be coming down and you might clip him. Now we're going to jump, we're just jumping over the red one here again. Two jumps to the right here and two quick jumps to the left should get us back to the left of the red amoebatron before it comes up again. There we go. Here is the one bit that kind of resembles a speed strap for this particular route. What you want to do is if you get this right, you are going to get to this platform here and are going to be able to jump over the pink amoebatron before it gets too high for you to do so. The way you need to do that is we want the green bookend to get to about this stripe here. So the second stripe along in the platform. Once it does that, we can jump across to the platform and as we are following the green bookend, we're going to pause briefly, jump up to grab the key whilst jumping over this in the, foot in the process. And by doing it like that, we should do this quickly enough to be able to jump over the pink amoebatron. Let's see how it goes. So there we go. Pause, jump, jump, and then jump and just got over the pink amoebatron like that. OK, now, if you don't get that quite quickly enough, it doesn't matter. You can just wait for the pink amoebatron to go back down again. But if you're doing this B strat, that is the quickest that you can kind of get that particular route. Now, one thing just I want to uh, add before I go into the A strat for this is let's say you're not quite quick enough off the mark at the beginning for getting under these amoebas. Let's say you just pause briefly there and suddenly you can't. You can still catch up to the cycle. What you do is once you get past the blue, go past the red, jump up here, jump straight across to this platform from that one. So ignore this platform here. Just jump straight across to this. It's not too, it's not an edge jump that, so it shouldn't be too hard for you to get across to it. Then jump over here, over the blue uh, bookend and over the green, and you are you have caught up basically with where you would be if you were doing um, the fast run underneath the amoebatron. So that's not pivotal. You don't need to worry about that. So up until this point in the uh, room, the B strat and the A strat are the same. So getting getting all these getting this timing on all these cycles is identical. What we're now about to do though. We're going to do two turning triple jumps. So we're going to do one here and we're going to do one over here as well. In order to do these, you need to get position pretty much perfect. And by pretty much, I mean just perfect. You're going to need to get this right from the off. So here's what you do. So that position I'm in there, mid stride position where his right foot is standing just above the stripe there. That is the position you need for this first turning triple jump. There we go. And then triple jump, two, three, up to here like that. Now, if you jump from around about the mid stride position here over to the conveyor belt, pretty much is the moment you get onto that platform, you'll land on this conveyor belt before the green bookend reaches the right. And that means you'll get on there without it hitting you. Now, this isn't entirely pivotal for this strategy but it makes it a lot better for queuing up the second jump to get into position for the second jump you're going to want to hit the mid stride position on the last square of the conveyor belt and that will perfectly if you hit it right put you into the position you need to be in for the next turning triple jump so here we go up like that now another reason you want to get that jump there is because as you see, even though it looked close, you just about avoid the green bookend and the blue amoebatron by doing that jump in that position there. Another thing to bear in mind is you can do this first triple jump, the one I showed you earlier, you can do that too quickly. 
And as a result of that, if you jump onto this conveyor belt too early, let's say you're about a square right of the green bucket or two squares right of the bookend, you are too quick, which means that if you do that jump, you will hit the blue amoebatron. So if your jump ends up too quickly on here, you might have to burn one or two pixels by just waiting. So let's see if we hit the position. We did, perfect. So again, the mid stride position here, once again with Willie's right foot on the stripe is what you need for this jump. This is a really tough strat because what we're gonna do, we're gonna wait for the red amoebatron to get low enough. Then we're gonna do a turning triple jump, which is gonna land here first, then up here, and then on here. So let's see if we get it. Cool, we got it. Now, you'll notice there was quite a bit of red color clash on Willie's leg as he jumped over that amoebatron there. Now that is a good sign because you want some color clash there to ensure you're in the right position for the next jump. Because this next jump is gonna be an edge jump. And you're gonna jump over the green bookend as it reaches the right side of this platform. And while we're doing that, we're gonna be jumping to grab this key and then to get over to this platform as well. So let's see if we manage it. Edge jump, and then hold jump, and keep pressing left. And as you can see there, we landed, we landed on the left-hand side of the bookend there, and we had a few pixels to spare in doing that. And because of that, we were able to jump up and grab the key, and then jump again to get over this platform. And as you can see, these two amoebatrons are nowhere to be found. So we are now in the clear, and that is the quickest you can get that. So let's see if we can just put that together one more time. In, in real time to see if we can do that. Because this is a tough strat. So here we go, getting up to positions. We're ahead of cycle at the moment, which is good. Because you've got more time to assume position. When we get to the pink one, here we go. And so that should still be fine, even though I fumbled it a bit there. Let's just jump onto the conveyor. And yeah, okay, so we are slightly beneath the green bookend there. That is a good sign. So we can now do the jump. And there we are. We're one pixel off from the position. So there we are. Oh, not much red color clash there. So this might be a death. And yes, we're going to get killed there. So that is the thing. That is why you need to be careful on where, how quickly you jump over the red amoebatron there. It needs to be fairly quick because otherwise you'll end up too far behind in the cycle, but it also um, doesn't need to be too quick because otherwise you'll hit the red amoebatron and die. So let's try that one more time to see if we can get it. So here we go, over the blue bookend again, over here, into the position, turning triple jump number one, onto the conveyor belt, and that's, again, we're under there, so that's a good position, jump, Landing in the perfect position, jump across. Oh, that's a good amount of color clash there from the red amoebatron. And there we go. So we got the edge jump there, straight across, and boom. That is a tough strat, as you can see. It's It requires a lot of precision on that one. But that is about as quick as you can get wacky amoebatrons. That will get you through the level in a crisp 49 seconds. Here we are in the Andorian forest. I'm going to show you pretty much just an A strat on this one. I think the adjustments that you're going to need for this one are, are minor. First thing we're going to do on this level is grab this item here. And we need to do that so that we time it so that we fall down without hitting the yellow Ewok. The way that you do that is we're going to jump here. So you see this little divot in the crumbling platform here. This little divot just to the right of this apple beneath. You're gonna to wanna to do the jump there. So here we go. So let's start restart level and jump up. And jump there. And then you fall down just behind the yellow Ewok. And you notice there was a fair bit of yellow color clash on Willie's limbs as he went past as well. And that's a good sign. So now we're gonna jump over the yellow Ewok and drop down. 
And because of that timing that we've just done, that means we are going to be at an optimum position here to jump over the pinky walk. Drop down, drop down, jump over like that. And you notice we missed the ready walk as well. Now, next bit is the right hand side of the level. And we are going to start by grabbing this apple here. Then we're going to grab this apple here. And then we're going to grab this one here. Now you want to do this first jump when you when Willie's feet are around level of the T from Forest. Then jump back across like that. And Willie's feet should hit these two collapsing platforms in the process. Um, now you have to be careful on this jump. The reason you want to jump from the middle of this T is because then the turning jump that you end up doing there. I see it's not technically a turning jump, so you're turning and then you're jumping, just to clarify. You're not you're not doing a vertical jump there, you're jumping straight back across. But if you are level with the T from Forest, then that means you are far enough back that you will do this jump without hitting this poisonous shrub here, because that is a big risk in the jump that I've just done across there. And you don't want that to happen. The other good thing about this timing is it means that this jump that I'm on now won't hit the blue Ewok like that. So grab the apple, jump back. And then when you are on this third collapsing platform, jump right up to here. And then we're going to do a turning triple jump going up to this platform, turning on the spot to get up here and then jumping to the right to grab this apple in the top right corner. Right. So watch one turn three like that. And we grab the apple. Now, the final apple we're going to grab is this one here, the one just beneath the very dangerous shrub. Now we're going to do this with a jump from up here. You have a two pixel range to get this jump right. So this final jump here you can do from this position or this position and you will be safe. So if you do it from here, you'll grab it and fall down like that. But if you're any further to the right like that, then you won't you won't fall down at all. Jump down there like that and now stand on this bit of platform here, which crumbles underneath you. You're then going to fall onto this crumbling square here, which as you can see has a little bit of, um, it still has a little bit of life left to it. And what you're going to do is the moment you hit that platform, vertical jump. And the reason you need to do that is you need to waste just a little bit of time before the pinky walk gets far enough right for you to fall onto their left. So here we go. And there you go. And so if you've done that level really well like that, then uh, you will land on the left of the pinky walk. And that is about as quick as you can get on that. So let's just try and put it together one more time into one bulk. So jump up. Jump from the divot into the branch, drop down, yellow colour crash, jump over the yellow Ewok, drop down, drop down, over the pink Ewok, walk along, jump up from the T, double jump across, jump from the third square, turn back, turning triple jump here, drop down, Drop down, vertical jump, crumble, and walk to your left. And that is a optimum Endorian Forest. Well, now you're halfway through the game. Congrats. Thanks for watching, and if you do have any questions or feedback, please do feel free to sling it in the comments section. Or feel free to drop by my Twitch channel if you want to see some of these strats in action. In the next part of this tutorial we'll be starting the fiendish second half of the game where we get to finish off the Kong Beast once and for all. This video is over.